Welcome to Montreal Rocks. And I'm speaking with Killa Jewel today. So uh, let's get going. How did you get started in the uh, music industry? So I, um, I've been DJing for the last 25 years. Um, prior to my discovering uh, the DJ world, I took classical piano for 10 years. So I have a um, a good background in musical theory and, and, and that kind of knowledge. Um, and then I, I'd say over the last 15 years or so, um, I started dabbling in music production. And um, for me, I think the transition from DJing to um, music production was just a natural progression for me. Um, you know, at a certain point, I wasn't feeling as challenged just as a DJ. So I felt like I needed to somewhat expand my musical knowledge and, um, and develop my ability as a producer and a composer. Wasn't just being like a female, a rarity and a challenge enough in that industry though? For sure. Um, you know, it's, it's a question that has always been posed to me, um, especially when I first started, you know, 25 years ago, there really weren't that many female DJs around. And I, I knew of a couple um, who were my inspiration back in the day. Oh. Um, DJ Cut and Candy, she, she was part of the, the battle scene, um, the scratch DJ battle scene uh, back in New York when I first started out. Um, there's DJ Shorty who's been doing it for longer than I have. Um, but really there weren't too many that I knew of. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, but over the years, I mean, definitely more women have picked up, uh, DJing and there are a lot more women involved in, in the DJ scene. But you're born and you live in Montreal, right? Yeah. Um, born and raised in Montreal. Okay. Um, I, I've always loved it here. I've, I've felt like Montreal has been such a great city, uh, to, experiment and to develop your craft. I feel like it's, you know, I've been part of a very supportive community. When I found the hip hop community here, um, I just felt like, you know, I was welcomed with open arms. And Montreal is a great little city to, you know, experiment um, with your sound. And as I said, to develop your craft and um, they're, they're a lot of little, you know, small venues and, and bigger venues as well with which to, to do that. Do you remember like being like younger and well, being a kid and like the first record album that like you bought with your own money or when you first started buying, did you always buy vinyls? So I, I actually started out um, when I first discovered DJing back in 1997, um, I was with my ex, well, my now ex-boyfriend at the time and he had been a DJ for six years. Um, and he was spinning vinyl. Um, he introduced me to electronic music. Prior to that, I had really no, I had no awareness about the scene. Um, I was just a teenager looking for, you know, a creative outlet. And, um, and I was fascinated at the way in which he took two vinyl records and mixed one seamlessly into the other. And this is of course a technique called mixing. Um, he taught me a lot of the basics about um, mixing, what, what BPMs, what styles of music. Um, and for a good couple of years, we were playing house parties and, and, and bars and, um, and house techno drum and bass and break beats were my main focus at the time. Those, those were all the vinyls I was buying. And over the next couple of years, I started um, falling into the hip hop scene and meeting scratch DJs, turntablists. Um, turntablism is, and DJing is an element of hip hop. And um, I recognized that there were a lot of people in the scene just so passionate about this particular skill. And I became very passionate about underground hip hop music. Um, you know, I guess some of my first records I, I ever purchased or that I can remember purchasing um, was uh, DJ Badim, 
um, the, the record was called The Theory of Verticality, I believe. Um, that was one of the first records, albums I purchased. Um, uh, for sure, Daft Punk was a huge influence on me as, a, as an electronic DJ at the time. Um, their record, Homework, uh, which came out mid 90s. Um, Portis Head, uh, Dummy. So I, you know, as my taste in music transitioned, I guess you could say from electronic to hip hop, um, I started listening to a lot of trip hop. Um, and uh, Sneaker Pimps was another one. I remember uh, going out and purchasing their the Six Underground 12 inch single. So Oh, massive attack, the wise guys. I mean, the list goes on, the list goes on. So my influences are definitely, um, definitely mixed between electronic music, trip hop and hip hop. And um, at a certain point I had to decide what genre I was going to stick to because of course buying records is an expensive hobby. So, you know, I said, look, if I'm gonna take this DJ thing seriously, I'm just going to choose a genre and just build my collection. And that's, that's how it all kind of started. And I realized pretty early on that, wow, I could actually make a career as a DJ. You know, I, as soon as you start DJing one party, you know, you get a request to play another and another. And so it was really just a natural progression. Cool. I saw you actually a few years back at one of the uh, Just for Laughs uh, comedy shows. I think it was the ethnic show. Yeah. And I remember because I was with a bunch of friends and they're like, hey, the DJ is a girl. <laughs> it was like, I'm sure you get that a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I do get that a lot. And it's, uh, I mean, the Just for Laughs has been an amazing gig for me. Um, prior to the pandemic, I had just um, I had just uh, celebrated my 10 year anniversary with them. Oh, wow. So I had been doing that quite a while. And it's just, um, you know, it's, it's a great gig because, you know, people are there to see the comedy, but it, it was fun for me to add a bit of a fun sort of musical DJ element. Um, so yeah, great group of people, great crew, and uh, hopefully we'll get back at it <laughs> maybe did next meet, summer. Did you meet any comedians there? Oh, I've met so many comedians over the years in the green room. And that's also the great thing about, you know, being part of the show is that you spend most of the time when you're not on stage, you're in the green room schmoozing. Okay. With, with all the comics, right? Yeah. So it's um, I definitely formed some great relationships with some of them. And did you ever get starstruck? Did anyone ever like make you feel like, you know? I mean, for sure. For sure, there have been uh, there have been comedians or you know any celebrities for that matter, um, you know off off the top of my head, uh, Dave Chappelle. I love know. oh I love Dave. <laughs> yeah. Dave Chappelle, um, you know Alonzo Bowden, great guy. Um, I mean, look, I I can name so many, and of course I can't name any on the spot but <laughs> there've been so many over the years. I, I'm not, I just, it happened. I was at a small show a couple of years back and I met um, Kevin Hart. Oh yeah. And he's really, really, really tiny. Yeah. Like, really tiny. Like, yeah. you know that he's, and I'm not very tall. And I was like, I mean, I, I, I just, I was like, oh my God. I acted like a real, like, flake, <laughs> but I, I got photos with him and I was just like hugging him and he's just so cute. To yeah. Do so yeah I've done the whole photo thing too I'm like do you mind do you have a minute yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know did you now this is a completely different question let's switch it up but what are the difficulties you faced uh, in the industry as a woman hmm. well for sure and this is just my experience and I don't know you know if this is real or not but I feel like there have been times where I felt like I've had to maybe work harder to prove myself yeah. um, in what I do and to be taken seriously. Um, you know, I, I typically, I find that even now, like even after all these years where you think, you know, there's so many more, not enough, but so many more women in 
in as DJs or producers mm-hmm. than there used to be. But it's still human nature, I find, to judge others based on their appearance or their disposition, their their demeanor. And I feel like people have always had sort of a preconceived notion of of what a DJ or music producer should be and how how I should act or how I should yeah. dress. And I think my my challenge over the years has really been um, to kind of break that belief or, or and or normalize the fact that, you know, DJs and producers come from all different types of backgrounds. And, you know, ideally, <laughs> it's nice to say, but it's true. It doesn't matter what your gender is. It doesn't matter, you know, what color skin you have or what clothes you wear. What matters is you know, what comes out of you and what you produce creatively, right? So, you know, the first time somebody meets me and they don't know what I do, they would never assume, they would never think in a million years that I, I'm a DJ. Um, but when they find out, they're they're pretty, you know, surprised. Yeah, I, oh, I could imagine, yeah. Um, <laughs> So you wear a lot of hats, like you produce and you DJ and you you write music as well, right? Mm-hmm. And now you're doing a little bit of singing on your on your new music that on your you you released an EP, right? I did. I released uh, my first official EP last summer called Reckless. Um, the I I do have another release that I put out um, unofficially a couple of years prior to that called Sodade. You could find it on my website on killajewel.com. The reason why I never officially put it out was because um, there are a lot of uh, samples on there that were never cleared. And that was a big learning experience for me as a first time producer And that, you know, I wrote this whole record and, and I was so proud of it. And then I realized, wow, the amount of money I would need to spend to be able to clear those samples. but yes, so I have I have this official um, release out on all of the streaming platforms, okay. and I've currently uh, this past winter I was lucky enough to sign with Indica uh, Hydrophonic Records here in Montreal, and mm-hmm. I am working on um, another EP that should be coming out sometime this summer. Okay, so I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited to have a team of people behind me um, to help push the music and um yeah I'm working on my live show as well so developing uh, live versions of all of my tracks that I can then hopefully you know tour with eventually once the world opens up again I read that you're in part of this um women in the studio accelerator I don't know why it's hard for me to remember that it's long (laughs) Uh, so you were chosen to be a part of that exciting program yeah. And uh, when did, so it's been around a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been around a couple of years. I believe this is their third year. Um, and I had actually, I hadn't heard of it until um, Kyria, who runs Indica Records, said, you need to apply for this program. Um, mm-hmm. And I looked into it and I was like, this, this sounds amazing. Um, basically, they, out of all of the applicants, um, they choose 10 to join the program. Mm-hmm. And most of us have, I, well, I believe all of us have um, experience in the industry already. So we're already working as producers, as songwriters, mm-hmm. um, as composers. And we they have given us so far um, such amazing um, experiences such as you know educational tutorials uh, with music professionals, um, mentoring opportunities, networking opportunities, so having one-on-one uh, um, meetings with people who we may not have otherwise had a chance to meet in the industry and you know, if you know anything about the music industry, it's that it's all about who you know. <laughs> so they definitely um, are doing a great job at uh, at setting us up with 
with uh, industry professionals and and having hands-on experience with uh, with um, you know different different people in the scene. Well, so there's a lot of networking and learning from each other and. Yeah, that's it. We also, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible for me, you know, the first thing that I felt when I met these girls, of course, virtually, is that, wow, I'm not the only one. And we are so few and far between in a sense that, you know, Canada geographically is such a, is such a, a big country. Right. Um, but I've never really had a chance to meet and, and speak with other women who do the same thing that I do. Um, and to be able to have that level of, you know, nerdy conversation, you know, I'm, I'm really a nerd myself and I love talking about gear and I love talking about my process and um, I can absolutely do that with these women. And it just, you know, it not only um, gives us a chance to uh, to learn from one another, but to also develop, you know, hopefully long term relationships with each other and maybe, you know, opportunities to collaborate in the future. That's great. Yeah, there's like a myth that I don't know when it started where there, you know, there's not, a, there isn't enough space at the top for women. So there can't be 10 women DJs, there can only be one like in a lot of fields, you know, and I like this program is that it's kind of breaking that down. And there's a lot of like inclusivity and, you know, exposure and motivation, you know, and encouragement, which is needed often. Like you said, you, you feel as a, as a woman, you often have to work harder to prove mm -hmm. A stand-up comedian that I'm obsessed with um, was a female comedian was saying, this is an, another one. She said, um, when she's sitting on a plane and the pilot walks by, and if it's a female pilot, she automatically thinks like, oh, she must be great because she had to work twice as hard to get there than let's say a male did. Yeah, um, you know, I, I get like, I totally agree with that. I can't speak to everyone else's experience, no. but yeah. at the same time, as a female, I've, I've recognized that I, may have um i may have had opportunities to play shows and to get bookings um where as if i was a, a male i'm um, doing the same thing he wouldn't have been chosen because being female is more of a rarity a novel or a like, novelty yeah in our novelty people will you know gravitate towards hiring you over the guy so i think it goes both ways. I think there have been advantages yes. and disadvantages. Absolutely. Like sometimes they'll be like, okay, we need a, we need a female hire to balance out the, the work that's group. It. But just one female. And that's the problem. You know, you yeah. often, you often, when you're looking at, um, you know, a, a flyer or a roster for a show, oh. you often have like the one or two token females on the bill and, you know, or it's an all female show. Yeah. So it's an all female. So, you know, I think we still have work to do in terms of normalizing the, but I do feel like we still need to work harder um, to get women, more women interested and into the field because, um, you know, some younger women I've spoken to have told me, you know, it's super cool what you do, but. I'm intimidated and I, I don't, you know, I don't feel like safe or confident enough to, you know, um, ask questions or, you know, so, so it's often just a question of having a space where other women feel comfortable enough to, you know, get involved. It's, it's getting there slowly, but surely, and, uh, you know, little changes, little changes, like these programs are great. And, uh, I'm going to be speaking with Margaret mm -hmm. Duffin, who is, um, it's a CEO of Canada music publishing, uh, music publishers, Canada, music publishers. Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. um, you got I, you, you almost got it. <laughs> There's too many big words. I know. I didn't read any of these books. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you so much for talking to me. Do you, is there anything you'd like to add or did I forget anything or? Um, I'm also producing and collaborating with two artists on Indica on the label. Okay. Um, and with the hopes that, uh, you know, one day I, I can, you know, create music for other artists to come on board and to collaborate with. That's also um, a hope of mine as well. You know, just um, trying to trying to book some shows maybe for starting, you know, in the new year, we'll see mm -hmm. um, DJ shows as well as, you know, live tour. Okay, I, I think, I don't think I asked you this one was, um, or maybe I did. And so what do you find the most challenging and what do you find the most rewarding in your, in your field? So absolutely, I wear a lot of hats. Um, up until this point, and even up until the moment where I got my first record deal, um, I've had to be everything all the time. Whether it's, you know, a DJ coming up with cool new, new sets for, for shows, whether it's, um, you know, writing music for my next album, whether it's booking shows for myself, um, you know, booking gigs, trying to find distribution for my music. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on and you really have to somehow be able to multitask, number one, and to, um, to accomplish uh, a lot of different things at the same time. And I feel like being a goal-oriented per person has really helped me. So when I know I have a specific date at which mm -hmm. you know something needs by which something needs to get done mm -hmm. that you know I'm a lot more productive that way otherwise I'm very kind of um scrambled or overwhelmed. <laughs> overwhelmed yeah and you also have to you know you have to have that personality where you know you're self-motivated because nobody else you know when you wake up in the morning nobody else is there going get up get your computer you know like you're your own boss yeah so you really have to be um you have to be self-motivated self-starter and you know some days i'm like i only got an hour of productivity in and i can't be angry at myself because it was an hour there are other days where i put 12 hours in yeah so and i've gone a couple of months without being productive at all and sometimes you just you know as a creative person you know, you can't always turn it on at nine o'clock and turn it off at 5 p.m. Right. So creativity comes at different times. Um, it's a bit of a, you know, an up and down type mm -hmm. thing. And you just have to go with the flow <laughs> in that sense. You're talking about productivity and motivation and all that. And so your your name is Kill a Jewel, which it's spelled as a jewel, but it's also like a, an ener a unit of energy, yeah. right? Did you name yourself or did somebody name you that? Like, how did you come up? Do you have a lot of energy, I guess? Yeah, yeah. I actually came up with that myself. Oh, cool. Um, and I was trying to find, you know, some a different play on words and different meanings. Yeah. And trying to pull, you know, elements of my own personality um, and, and use that and try to incorporate that as what my DJ name should be. And exactly as you said, a kilo joule, different spelling is a measurement right. of the energy. Um, and when I started uh, uh, hip hop DJing, I was very involved in the DJ battle scene. Oh. And I would enter you know, many different competitions over the years. Oh. Um, com competing for me was uh, an opportunity to improve my skills because of course you're you know you're working at, at you know getting better um, okay. at, at different tech dj techniques and um so i thought the killer part was good for you know yeah <laughs> the battle side of things right well because i was always like a super energetic person um and uh and jewel well because my real name is julie so i thought you know yeah, yeah. Something about that. And a diamond has always been, you know, part of my... I oh, yeah, the, the needle on your needle on the turntable. 
Well, that too, right? So there are a lot of different ways you can look at it, but I think kilojoule stuck for a reason. And, you know, to this day, like, that's what, that's what people know me as. That's who people know me as. So. So thank you very much for talking to us today. And uh, we'll see you soon. Are you uh, doing any shows in Montreal? I'm doing a live stream actually on August 7th. Okay. At 7 p.m. for the Under Pressure Festival, which is um, a festival that happens here. It's a graffiti festival. Oh, cool. But, um, they, have, uh, they have different DJs playing and, and different performances throughout the, the couple of days that it runs. So this year they're still online and yeah, I'll, I'll be streaming live.